And one of the great rivalries, and it's a privilege to be a part of that history and, and legacy uh, of that rivalry. And, uh, again, had two very talented football teams play on Saturday. Uh, we were able to make a few more plays. Uh, again, classic game. Uh, Love the way our kids grew up in that game. Love the way we competed in that game. Uh, playing the next play, no matter what circumstances were, you had to lead, you weren't to lead, momentum swings, plays. I mean, just I, I think we really, really grew up in a lot of areas. Now, is there a lot of room for improvement? Yes, we left plays on the field. But I don't know if you ever, the very few games I've never I've ever walked off the field and not left plays on the field. I mean, sometimes that happens. But the way you just come back and play the next play, and everybody took the same turns, and we had some things. we got to convert in the red zone a little better, to tight zone, but... Love what we had called, love what we did. Got to execute, coach a little better, play a little better. But, you know, we had great balance on the night, run and pass. Got the ball down the field with chunk plays. Uh, got the ball to our playmakers in space. They were able to run the football. Everett, Everett made plays with his arm, with his leg, with his mind, making good decisions defensively. Uh, got good pressure on the night. We only had the two sacks or so, but batted five or six balls, hurried a lot of balls. Got good – made the ball come out. And they, they made plays. They got good players. They got open at times. Uh, I think Trey Marshall getting out uh, limited us in some areas, but that's no no reason not to. We had other guys step up and make great plays and, and hit roles. I was very proud of that. And uh, just an overall defense stood up and really, after Miami had a good swing there in the second half, a couple of series really stood up those last couple of drives, excuse me, and played very well. Uh, offensively responded the first time we got behind, immediately went down the field in a, in a big time drive, nine, almost, a 80, uh, almost a 90 yard drive, hit a big third and eight to get it going and finished off the drive. But. Uh, very proud of our kids. I think uh, at the same time we're taking steps in the right direction. We're, we're evolving, like I talked about. I, I, I like which way we're going. Are we there? No, we're not, we're not perfect. We got a long ways to go. That's the exciting thing. That's the thing to me that intrigues me and keeps you going every day. That there's a lot left out there, but these kids are understanding and getting it and doing everything they can to get better every week. And very proud and playing well. And you know, right where we thought we'd be. And uh, this team has developed its own identity and personality. And I like it. I said at the beginning of the year, I like it, and now you're starting to see it come to fruition and how the performance in certain areas. But again, great game, and now we got to get put that up. It's over. Forget it. Move on. Get ready to play Louisville. Louisville, very good defense. Excellent defensive football team. Uh, a lot of big <coughs> physical guys inside with Rankins and Brown. Uh, and they got the transfers of Fields. That was big, he was a big 12 player of the year when he was there. You got Josh Harvey Clemens in the secondary. You got Shaq. Shaq Wiggins, with Williams, and Tremaine Washington, good players we knew in high school. Keith Kelsey, Burgess knew all those guys. Keith Brown, uh, Pro uh, 2 I guess that's how you did. Really good player for them. At 91, comes in as a rush. 14 is a great junior college guy coming in. I mean, excellent. Offensively, they can throw it. Then they got running quarterbacks and do all kinds of things. They get getting unbalanced looks. They do all kinds of different things on offense. Bobby's a great offensive mind. Special teams, they got good players. I mean, this is a really good football. They've had three losses, but all of them been right to the wire. I mean, in the Auburn game, uh, the Houston game, and the Clemson game. I mean, Clemson, they're down there in two minutes, ready to score and tie it or win it. Uh, Auburn, they were right at the end, had some mistakes in the game, could have won the game. Houston, 34-31. So, it's a very good football team. You watch them on film, buddy, they're really well coached and do a great job. So, we got to put that behind us and get ready to play another great game against Louisville this week. Question? Do you have to feel Bobo has done as a blocker? I, I would, that's why I think our receivers really grew up a lot the other night. I was very proud of our downfield blocking on our screen games, on our run game, all those type of things being physical. Erman Lang stood out to me, probably our skill blocker of the week. Probably Erman Lang. I mean, he did a really nice job in the game. Those other guys were all doing it. Tight ends, the backs. I mean, but I've been pleased with Bobo getting much better. Much, Bobo's strong. You don't, I mean, you think I'm being, Bobo in that weight room now, I mean, he's a very compact, but he is a very, very strong guy. He really is. Is it any more difficult or easier blocking out, blocking kind of on an island for, for those receivers? Oh, that's hard. I mean, think about this. I mean, he's on a lineman to get two-way goes. You're in, the more space you get, mm -hmm. I mean, athletes you're blocking, and you're you're thinking where the ball is going behind you. You know, I mean, it's like drive, would, you, would you drive a car like this? I mean, where are they at? You know, I mean, it's almost like as you're trying to get on. Then you got to read the defender based on what he's doing compared with the ball. I mean, that's hard. And then you get your hands on the guy, and he separates not to hold him or to cut. I mean, that people do not understand how hard it is to block in space. I mean, it's extremely hard. It's always stressed when you guys and Coach Dawson, but when you have four in the backfield, I mean, he literally can pop an 80-yard oh, ball yeah. any play, so they have to go with every play hard. They do. That's exactly right. And that's just like I tell our backs and linemen, when you have great skill guys at wide out, you don't know what short pass that you let up on could be caught and go to the house or throw a deep ball. And the way we go. I mean, that's the thing about having the skill we have. And it's tough. As a receiver, you know, you can't take a play off every play. Blocking the run just is important.
You don't know what play changes it, man. When it, when four of those guys touch it, big things happen. That uh, third and eight pass that uh, Everett hit was it as difficult as it looked? Oh yeah, I mean that was a great big time square in throw. You, hey, you got to be con- there's got to be some conviction, knowing where you're going with it, understanding why you're going there, and trusting yourself and that receiver and everybody else. And that play really we grew up because I thought the play before should have been hit on the corner route, a tremendous route by Travis Rudolph, but to not to get frustrated. And say, okay, I know I missed that one when I could have got us out of there. And then turn around and make that throw. That was, that was a really big time play by everybody involved. Did that did the timeout really help you a little bit there? Talking, it did. Talk about it? <laughs> yeah. right. It did. It did. I think it did. But you don't ever know. I mean, sometimes they hurt you. But Everett would have done it anyway. I, I, I'm really, I like where he's going. I mean, we still got there's some things we always got to get to. I, we never got there with Jameis in every which way possible. I mean, and everything you did. It's always because a quarterback there's so many things. But those big moments being having conviction on what you're doing, not hoping it's going to happen, not wanting it to happen, seeing it, executing it, and making it happen. And when it came, right? I mean, that was you just—it was the first time you trailed all season. You don't want to give the ball right back to Miami with a one-point lead. And they were hot on offense. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, big. Again, I like I talked to our guys, and we. What I liked about the other night was controlling the momentum of the game and the tempo of the game, and then when you lost it. When you lose it, the only way you can change it back, people got to change it back. People have to change momentum back. Big-time players making big-time plays no matter what the circumstances. That's how momentum gets formed. And momentum of a game is we don't talk about it enough. And when you have young players, it's very easy to let that snowball on you, to not have the mental toughness or the fortitude to understand that at the, at the time it's happening and to be able to do that. And that's what I was so happy about our football team the other night in different, two or three different times in the game. Tim, was that one of the reasons why you brought Everett in? Because you had that experience, you've been in a big situation, you got in a situation like this and he'd be able to make it. No doubt. I mean, and that, be, he'd been through it, you know what I mean? And and hopefully it, it would translate, and right now it is. Were, were there certain, you said Everett pressed you arm, uh, feet, and mind. Were there certain plays uh, just about the like pressing with his mind that that's just out to you? Just, you know, not being greedy in game, dumping certain balls down on whip routes, scrambling, you know, and, and hitting the underneath guys. And I, what I mean by that, because you get a tendency – when things go well, you just want to keep making plays. You want to be the hero of the game. This man, the game is bigger than anybody who's ever played it or anybody who's ever coached it. you got to trust your eyes and take what's there. And I think there was multiple times in that game that he did that. There's one or two times I don't think he did. I think he started to get out of it, and then he got himself right back in there. But that's, when you make that many decisions as a quarterback in a game, man, it's, hard to, <laughs> it's hard not to make a one or two. As a coach, when you call plays, I mean, everything. There's so many multitude of things that happen, but to be able to go right back to it. Has he been pretty linear going up with that over the course of the five games? Or Seems, to be. Seems to be. Seems to be. Seems to be. Seems to be. As far as defense is concerned against Wade, 27 first downs. Miami, 8 of 16 on third. Louisville's a top 50 team on third down. What's been kind of discussed on that side of the ball about maybe trying to take away those opportunities on first and when, second down? Well, that's what you got to do. you got to win first. Now, we did in the running game, but you play one of the better quarterbacks and one of the best skill groups you're going to play. That's it. You just got to work on it and get better. Well, that's what I was going to ask too. It's just scheme, what goes on, players. That's the first time we've seen Stacey Coley. They moved him around in different places in the game. You didn't have a game plan to be able to scout against him as much. And they did a real nice job with that. Well, and they had a couple extra days. Well, because that was the other thing, too, is what's it like for you as a coach and, and a staff to say, like, okay, on one hand, we stopped the running game, but on the flip side, we did pass over 400 yards, or is that kind of expected? No, it's not expected, and it's not wanted, but that's what happened, so just address it and move on. There's no alarm. You just work on the things you do and get better on the next thing. Did they're all scholarship, too. Did losing trade affect what you wanted to do this back to you Well, just different things because of not just losing him, but where it put other people. And not necessarily with Tyler, but how it affected other back end people and where you could move and, and match ups, personnel match ups, of how you had to do things. But again, I say that's not a reason for anything. And I thought Charles, after the second, when they hit the last one, the last two drives, we made adjustments to not let Coley get in those situations again. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, made plays out. But he had a couple of nights in that, in that deal, and, and we made the adjustments and, you know, on, in game adjustments to do that, and we limited what they had to do. Did it take away Darwin's ability to do some stuff in the line of scrimmage? Though? At times, because he had to be in the back end. You know what I mean? But I was very pleased that that. Again, there's other things I keep getting from this is that we keep getting guys in key situations, having to win games and make plays. And you know, you felt. And the other big thing in that game was getting uh, Nate back and some key things that allowed him to get in the game. You know, even play as limited as he did to allow some rest or move some guys around. But it, and it's letting Darwin grow because he had to do so much.
As a coaching staff, do you feel like you have to add an added wrinkle um, playing a team coming off a of bye week? No. You just got to do what you got to do to win. I mean, just look at what you think is the best. You can't say, I got to put wrinkles in. You can do what you can execute. Putting, putting them in and executing two different things. And that's what we're continually, we're a work in progress. We still are. I mean, we go into things, but they're going to get executed perfectly. We got to keep doing it, though. But we keep, we got to give ourselves enough weapons to be able to do what we have to do to score the points and or defensively make the play like you're talking about on third down or first down or whatever it is. We've got to continue to do those things, but you also have to put that in with execution. I mean, you know, how much can you do? Tomorrow's Walker's uh, when a player is injected on that penalty. Is that hard on a kid? It looked like you said something to Trey on him. Well, I did because he did. You understand, Trey Marshall has really matured. He puts unbelievable amount of time in preparation. His heart and soul goes into playing football. I mean, it does. He lives, he, I mean, he loves it. And for him, and, and there wasn't, and then he was mad. You know what he felt? He let his team down. I mean, that, I mean, there was a genuineness. I made a mistake. You know, I just lowered my head of hair and got to keep it. I mean, you're talking about from going here to here. That's the difference. But that's dangerous. It's a good, I mean, that's the call. There's no problem with it. But one of the, hey, reminding at this time he did it, what he has to do to correct it, not to hit your head down, and to keep your head up and move on and be positive and think, no, he, he didn't do it on purpose. I mean, you know, but we got to coach him better, and he got to make a better decision. And, and do that, but his heart and soul's in. I mean, there's no one who hurt more than he did for what, you know, because he felt like he let his team there. Did Marcus seems to feel after the game uh, any prognosis for Terrence this week? No, Terrence, uh, they said he, he, he swelling's getting better, but we'll have to see. I mean, they know how that goes. Uh, Dalvin sore like we thought he would be, and we were going to rest him on Monday anyway. You know what I mean? We always want to do that before he's going to treatment. He said he feels good, and they was, so he felt okay. Do you have to lighten his load a little bit more at practices now? No, we'll, we'll limit it just like we do. We always we'll keep a gauge on where we are with everything, just like we always do. Okay. For him to be able to bounce back like that, for him to be able to bounce back like that, and, and for you not to have to take a load off of him, what does that mean? Well, we took a load off of him. I mean, as much as it sounds, his load there was big, but it wasn't. It wasn't as much as it was in South Florida or anything else. You know what I mean? And, and I care if Vickers got in the game, we've got to keep a rotation with those guys in the game. Because the thing about on offense, though, we, we've scored a lot, but early he had some big plays, but they were one play deals. There wasn't, four, you know, a lot of our early drives were based off big plays. You know what I'm saying? The first two drives, you go back and think about it, he had a 72 yard run, scored the second touch, and on a 36 yard catch. He had only had one of the other two plays. So, I mean, the load there was intense on those couple plays, but there wasn't a lot of others. You know what I'm saying? So, his load was pretty normal for a normal game. Do you hold your breath at all with? Of course, his very first carry, he's out running free at you know, 50 yards. And you're yeah, worried I, about I, I, I don't look at things that way. I, uh, you, you sit and worry about what can happen, the what is, the what is. My Lord, the coach will go absolutely. You talk about aging dog years, you're aging triple dog years. <laughs> you're aged 21 years a year instead of seven. But, I mean, you, know, you, you don't want it to happen, but you, you can't. You go, you go. What's the difference between to have me and some other guys play for well, I think it shows the importance as your leadership and your guys who are the guys out there that how important it is to them. And it sets a standard for these young guys about what it means and the legacy they want to live in and how, you know, championship caliber teams respond and championship caliber players respond to adversity. No matter what their role is, maybe it diminished or whatever, but they still want to be a part of helping their team be successful. And I think it's just a tremendous example. It's 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 what you say it's what football's about, but I'm tell you what, it's what life's about. Everything ain't going well. Things happen. Tom D'Angelo? Yeah. Hey, Jimbo. Hey, Tom. Did, did you, did you, did you, you been on field more for the passing game, and is that a product of Everett just a little bit, you know, growing more and more, or was it a product of playing Miami? Well, I think it's a product, one, of ever growing. Our offensive line and our pass protection really growing. Our young receivers and tight ends dry. I think it's a combination of everything. Again, it's the evolution of what we're doing offensively. You know what I mean? Of, of getting everybody on the same page. And, and we had a couple other things. That, you know, we had a couple that we couldn't get down there to, and we had some other plays that we thought we could get. But it's really an evolution of all, all of the above, Tom. You know what I'm saying? And then being able to run that football when you can play action. Well, and that's right. If you can hear that evolution, how much does that help that running game? Oh. Exactly right. It does. I mean, because if you know, if you overload it, there is a chance now that they can throw the football down the field, make plays, you can run the option, have screen game, they have this, they have the university to get, you know, another foreseen thing in that game, game Kermit had. Kermit had a big time game. Nine catches had a career high. 
and getting that little sucker out there in space with the ball and doing that. And not just on Wilson. He's catching the ball down the field. He ran some tremendous corner routes and go routes. I mean, and he, he keeps evolving into a player. And when you get speed like that now, it changes things. I coach a lot of things. I can't coach that. Uh, yeah, I've seen him on film enough. I didn't sleep much last night, night before. He had a headache. That guy can throw and he can run. He can we recruited him. I liked him out of high school. I thought that guy was a very dynamic player now. And uh, he's a really, really good player. And run it, throw it, everything. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. Chris, you want to go ahead? Hey, Jim, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Doing great. A uh, question for you. The fourth and one in the second quarter at the 10-yard line. Mm-hmm. You went with a run formation. Mm-hmm. Uh, explain to me the reason why you went with a run formation. And was that because of the normal quarterback you could get that two yards to get a first down? Well, Jim, you got six inches. You got a big lineman, you got a great back, you got a good thing, you got to knock six inches out. They make the play. About attitude, trickery don't you win a lot of those things. And you got to be able to knock them out. Uh, and I'd line up, I'd do it again. We, no, no, and we block it a little bit better. We run it a little bit different, maybe get the hair on some things. But that's our play. That's what we do. That's our go with it again. I mean, they make the play. Sometimes football isn't all about trickery and making the right call. You got to line up, butt somebody in the mouth, knock somebody out of there, and do make a yard when they know you have to make a yard. That's what it's about. And talk about the uh, the final drive. It seems like uh, Everett, you know, the churn on that final drive. It looked like it was just like one of those typical what we saw last year with uh, James. It did. I mean, he made the plays. We got the situations. He made good decisions with the ball, but he ran it. He threw it. Getting the check offs, getting the ball to the right guys, and that, and just you know, didn't worry about winning the game. Worry about executing the play. You want to win the game, execute the next play. And, that, and I think that's what he stayed in the moment that way, and didn't look for the outcome. And, that, and I think it stayed true to the process of what we do and how we believe. And I thought it was very important and critical. Thanks, Jimbo. You're welcome. Jason, you want to go ahead? Sure. Um, Jim, I know you were talking about Jason Kelsey earlier, and on the subject of. Um, Thank you. 
Yeah. What are the top of the challenges? Top ranked top five not to be for you. For the lot of these guys, your guys being some of these positions and these situations for the first time coming off an emotional win, is there any more concern, not an indictment of the rule, but any more concern about how they might respond? Well, that's now the next step. That's part of the evolution. Get used to playing big games. Get used to playing rivalry. That rivalry's over. Now you got your right play. And that, again, that is part of our evolution this week of growing and understanding back to work. That's all great. Moving on. You know, we, we had our full celebration and afterwards, and a little bit of day afterwards. Now it's it's on the loop. We understand that you know each game is just you know, the biggest game is the next game. Right. And that's part of our evolution, which I'm anxious to watch this take on this week. Demarcus Walker has seemed to kind of built into the most consistent pass rusher you have. What has he done to, to put himself in that position? We can every week. That guy comes in. We love everything about football. Team leader, team guy, not afraid to speak up to folks, works his tail off, has really developed himself into a really, really good football and vers- very versatile in what he can do. He was like, probably our defensive player of the game last year. He was a defensive player of the game. You know, Dallas still only had a little sophomore season, so maybe you want to you hesitate to call him the best you've ever coached accomplishment-wise, but ability-wise, have you ever been around anything quite like this? I've been around some good guys now. I mean, we'll wait and see how it goes. But he, he's, he's definitely up there. I mean, they don't get a lot better. I mean, he, he's a very special guy. And, and uh, ability, we get caught up in that, so which it, it's phenomenal. But it's the, it's the intangible thing. I mean, it, it's just the ability to compete, the ability to learn, the ability to toughness, the, the mental toughness, the fortitude. I mean, just in his drive to be great. I mean, there's so many qualities about it. You know what I mean? That when you put with that ability, then you have, you know, you have a very, 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 very good play. And you know, his challenge is, you know, the consistent of keep going every week, preparing every week. But he does all those things. You know what I mean? And not get off track. Just keep going what he's doing. Don't get bored. Do you ever? I know you watch film different than any of us would. Do you ever rewind one of his runs just to enjoy it again? Oh, I, did. I mean, just to see how it went and see what he's asking. Sometimes you don't get to appreciate it. the jump cuts and really make people miss in the hole or, or the the subtleness. I've been able to hit that burst, slow down. But see, that's what he does, which a lot of fast, fast guys don't. He runs with great tempo. You know what I'm saying? He tempos his runs. When it's burst time, it's burst time. When it's read time, it's read time. But he can transition both up and back like that because he has great vision, his eyes, and what he sees. And he understands what he's doing. And I think a lot of people say, well, I got a fast guy getting the ball. Well, running ain't like that. That's like saying the guy swings the bat hard, he got to be able to hit. All of a sudden, they throw that change up and slider and that 98 mile hour fastball is tail or that cutter, you, know, you can't hit. It's like running. I mean, just because you run fast doesn't mean you're a great runner. You know what I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of God given instincts in there that none of us talk. Okay. Does the game almost seem slower? Can I say about the great ones? Yeah, the game you'd have to ask him that, but I mean, I don't know. If sometimes I think they say that when they all retire. <laughs> like coaching, you don't know. So you have to see this is going on. When you're in that grind, you don't see none of those things. When you're playing, you, you you're not thinking about those things. You're reacting. You know what I'm saying? You, it, the, it, those guys aren't thinking. You think it's over with. See it, do it. You know what I mean? And it's just a natural ability to do it. But an estimated them to, to you, to me, or somebody else, it may be a lot slower to him it's happening, but you know, that's that's what God makes him to do. You know, for some him of them. to be able to do this this season so far, I mean, it was on him this off season because he wasn't with the team. <coughs> that's the kind of stuff you're talking about, those intangible. The maturity levels, the things he does, the work ethic, the responsibility he takes. To be a great player for his team. What are some of the biggest challenges of going against a young quarterback that can also run the football? This oh, week? keeping edges. I mean, you, I mean, with young guys like that, I mean, they're keeping edges on them, making sure you keep them in the pocket, but at the same time pressing them so they don't get to sit back there and have all day throw the football. I mean, you know, you've got to mix the looks up and all that stuff. So the multitude of things he brings, you got to bring back to him. You don't think Josh Sweat played? Good. Like pressure the pocket, kept edges good, getting better and better, learning. Learning to rush on the edges of guys. And the big thing for those young ends is learning to transition from run to pass. Because I mean, the thickness of, I mean, the middle of a guy taking on a run, squeeze it, and all of a sudden I see it transitioning in the pass and transitioning into the pass rush, getting on the edges again. Those things take time. And uh, he is, he, there's a lot of little things he's doing right now that we as coaches see that we really, really like. And I, I think he's just going to just continue to grow. It seemed like the third quarter he had two, about two or three hurries. He did, getting on the edge, and then when we could lay those ears back and I mean, he just, he, he, he loves, he's another one. He just works his tail off and loves the ball. Smart, hey, very smart. I don't seem to remember you guys running that much empty backfield earlier this season. Is that, do you feel better about the line? Or, or well, line and different looks. Some of our receivers are growing up. If they're like putting more of those guys on the field, you know what I'm saying? And the evolution of the court. Again, it's, it's all of us. 
the receivers, the backs, the quarterback, just, you know, been practicing, working on it, just you know, the evolution of what we're trying to do and the, and the amount of packages we can present to them. And the, uh, the pass, did Auden team not get deep enough, or was it over Overthrow. Oh, okay. Hitting that seam, and he was trying to get in that hole, he was over three, yeah, this is low inches. That was a, even because the play, but there, there's a touchdown there, and the play before, Dalvin dropped it. Dalvin dropped it to walk in. I mean, even he made a mistake. <laughs> I mean, but, that, you know, that's, but I like, but, but here's what's happening. Do we have to keep, but the decisions were right. When we missed when the ball was right, even though we threw it in the flat, we dropped. I mean, that you as a coach, you, you're you're so close. You just gotta keep keep song work. Keep song work. Can you see ever not just on the field, but just getting more comfortable and being here? I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a big that's well, a big change for each week because of you know how, what he's doing and how he's doing and the way we do things. You you see that much each, each and every week. But does he feel like even more comfortable just talking on campus? Anything like yeah, that? Yeah, just getting his you know getting here in Tallahassee. He seems stuff. to be seems very relaxed and comfortable in his about it against Miami, you said Everett had a different look in his eye, and obviously that showed on the field as well as confidence. What's the challenge in making sure that not only progresses going forward, not just for a big rivalry game, but also Today just on Monday. take a step back? Today on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You usually get that look in your eye when you study real well. It's like going to take a test. Guys, if you don't mind taking that test on when the teacher makes it, they study it all week, feel good about the test, they don't mind walking in there. Them guys that, you know, have been half studying, ain't really been looking at their notes, ain't been reading, what am I sitting by? You know what I'm saying? I mean, unfortunately, that, that's, that's the mentality. You but I say that, it, it is about that. Your confidence comes from your preparation. The power of preparation. It can't, it, it can't be overstated. The ability, what makes Tom Brady, Tom Brady? Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning. Those guys, how they prepare. Physically, mentally, and psychologically. Jimbo, a lot of the preseason questions seem to surround the pass rush from a year ago and the production you're getting on defense. And and last week you sound a little bit concerned after the 27 first rounds of way. How do you assess where you're at defensively at this point? Much improved. I like what we're doing. We're, again, evolving in the, in the kind of team we need to be, making progress in a lot of areas and growing in a lot of And still have room to grow. That's the thing I like about it. It's crazy. We have a lot of room to grow. <coughs> but we're getting there and we're working hard. I, I've been pleased. I've been pleased. But not satisfied. That's diff- there's a difference. You've always been good in like quarterbacks. And on offense, defense, Sorry. and special teams. Sorry about that. You've always let you've always been good in like quarterbacks talk to us. Mm-hmm. With Golson, is that because he's a new guy? He, he's a new guy, evolving in, letting him get used to this thing. Not, not have. Eliminate the clutch. He's here. They didn't do a job. There's a lot. I mean, everybody expectations, things like that. I mean, everybody's well, I know, and I know you all want to talk to him. It's not. It's not about that. It's what I think is best for our football team and what I think is best for him. And it has nothing, it's not an indictment on him, it's not an indictment on y'all, it's not an indictment on anything. I just think it's what's best, and, I, and my, my interests have to go with what's best for those kids in that football team. And I think that's what's best for, for them. That's, that's why. People want to talk about, sorry. And there may be a time he does, but just, not right now. People will look at Louisville's record. I mean, those three losses are, you know, one was to a top five preseason team, Clemson, Houston, both have I think they're still undefeated. Yeah. yeah it's a, that's what I'm saying. This is a really good football. You watch that film now. I mean, you don't see a two and three team. You know what I'm saying? You can see a five and zero team, four and one team, three. I mean, all those games. I mean, you see a really good football team. That's that's my point. I mean, when Miami's over with, folks. We need to get going. We need to get going, and, and they've had an extra week to prepare for us. And they're a very. I said this last year. Everybody laughed at me. Well, well, we had eleven guys drafted. How many guys they have drafted? Ten. Ten. All right, I can name right here. One, two, three. I'm looking at defense. Four, five, possibly six on offense. I mean, you, you're talking about another. Could be another six to eight or nine if some of those juniors are something. I mean, I mean, you're talking about another big load. I mean, this is a talented, talented football team. They have the formation where uh, Brady Donovan and Lamar Jackson on the field at the same time. What type of challenges is, is that type of formation? Got to be aware. I mean, you, you can't get overstated with it. You just got to be aware that there's a chance that two you know, guys can throw the football. At least I'd rather have that and not know the receiver could go. <laughs> he has the ability to do it. You talked a lot about evolution, whether it be with individual players or this team. For you and your staff, what's the end goal of this evolution, or is it just kind of a... Be the best we can be. The goal of the evolution is to make this team the best it can be and not worry about anything else. You know, the, how we're going, you know... This team has one year life expectancy. Make this team as good as it can be. And like I say, some of it you, you'll be able to do. You, and you want, to, you want things to speed up. Sometimes you can't force things. Can you force your kids to grow up? 
You can give examples. You can give everything in the world. You, you got them 24 hours a day. You can teach them. And sometimes they do. Sometimes I'll, I'll say you think they ain't got it. Tomorrow they walk in and say, boy, I got that. You know what I mean? That's, that's part of this team. It's, the evolution needs to be, we got to make this, this team as good as it can be. And, and I don't know it. But I, and I, but I think the sky is very high. Just a matter of us and our teaching and coaching and their learning and playing. One more question. Good. I mean, overreach some things already got a little high, but big body guys on I me mean, didn't turn guys loose. Assignments were good. I mean, that was huge getting him back in there and having him ready for that game. He did a great job, especially flipping over the left guard and doing that. He can really help us. Jimbo, real quick, this is completely out of left field. You, this happened while you've been talking. Will Greer, the starting quarterback in Florida, has been suspended from here for steroids, which is crazy. What I'm asking is, number one, I don't remember that ever happening, but what do you do to educate your players on steroids? It's a constant. I mean, we have constant drug education. I mean, we test our guys. Every week, certain guys get tested. The NCAA comes in and does tests. We know that. I mean, it is a constant education on that. And, and you know, about, and then about take, you know, going to the GNC store. I mean, we talk about you don't don't take one thing and put in your body that you haven't told us, shown us. I think this is listen. We got all the supplements. We got the things that are legal. Go by. Trust us. Nobody out there is going to have your best interest and know what's right and wrong. And I, I mean, I don't know that. that. That's a tragedy, and I'm very sorry for them and him. I, I hate that. It's sad to hear. You tell the team that tonight is a reemphasis system. I mean, yeah, that, that's in there. That's it. When things like that happen, you hate that. But you, you know, use examples of hey, this. Look, I mean, anything, anything, please. And it may be something simple and crazy. You hear about it all the time in pro sports. I mean, some of them guys, everybody said, well, all they do. Sometimes you don't. Because what they put in these products in these stores a lot of times, you don't know what's in them. You know, I mean, I'm not making this. I don't know the situation or anything, but just don't do any of it. Don't do any of it. All right, thank you. All right, thank you.